for some people and myself, it's a little bittersweet at the end of one of these jobs because you know you know you're finishing and you, you know move on to something else. But uh, you know we're lucky to have something really great to move on to, and that would be orcas. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's not over yet with this boat because we're going to take it out for a cruise here, and we're going to find out a whole bunch of things about it. You know we we already know it's a V bottom. We built it, so it'll outride a flat bottom skiff by far. You know, the whole idea is going into the weather, you would have to have this V bottom. You know, a skiff would have the bow up in the air and, and pound in terrible flat bottom. And uh, this skiff right here is not liable to do it. The other thing is it's very heavy, so it'll keep the bow down. You know, it depends on how fast you're going and what the weather's like. It'll go across the weather, across the waves, and swells really nicely. And, uh, you know, as long as you're not nutty, you know, it'll do well downwind as well. So, you know, we know basically what it's going to feel like, but to get the real feel of it, you have to take it out for a cruise. Well, I'm planing down the top of the guard and the top of the in whale. Uh, you know, I didn't want it to be 90 degrees to the frame, and it's just too much of an angle on top. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a little less than that, and uh, it's tipped down. It's not level, and it isn't straight across. It's got a little bit of a crown in it, you might say, and uh, that just keeps the gunnel from holding water and uh, keeping its finish a little better. So I'm planing these things down. I can put something like this across, you see, to just check the angle as I do it. Uh, just to see if it fits right down there nice and tight, which it does back aft here. I'm already done there. And, uh, you know, it's funny playing in something like this. You can feel it, and you can hear it, and you can see it. It's amazing. All your senses kind of come into it. And, uh, you know, it's funny when you go through a knot or something like that, it sounds different, it feels different, but, you know, you keep... You might not take as much off each time, but it's okay. You just keep going through there until this line on the inside starts to disappear. I put a pencil line on the inside edge of the in whale, and uh, as I plane it, you know, I don't touch that line. It starts taking this side off, and then when it starts touching the line, you know, I switch to the other side because plane on this side changes the bevel on that side a little tiny bit. So I plane one side, Plane the other side, get them nice and even, and uh, you need a sharp plane for this because <laughs> some of the grain is going down this way, some of it's going up. I can only plane in one direction, so <laughs> it needs to be nice and sharp so that I can achieve that. So I got a little spot right here to do, and then I'm just going to continue from here up forward. Now I scratched the line down the outboard side of the guard like this because I'm going to be planing down the inboard side until I kind of get to that pencil line. And I've also scratched a line down the outboard edge of the in whale because I'm going to be planing the inboard edge down. Now I have to work them at the same time because if I don't, the two angles will come out off wrong, So uh, especially the in whale. So, you know, I'm going to plane them, I'm going to keep checking them with the bottom of my plane across like that just to see if they match up. And uh, it's not 90 degrees to anything, and it's not level either. It's got a little bit of a pitch on it so the water will drain off and, uh, you know, it looks kind of nice actually. So I'm doing it by hand because you got grain going up and down, and I could do it with an electric plane, but the problem with that is one mistake with that. And you're going around a curve like this, so the plane doesn't want to sit there exactly right. You know, neither does the number five, but uh, you can kind of make the number five go where you want it to go and plane the depth that you want it to plane. So you can see there's quite a bit of planning involved in this, actually. You, know, you can't just grab the plane and stop planning it because the in whale's got to be the right height first off, or you're just going to make a mess of it. You can't save it with the plane. You know, so every piece before the planing has to be right in order for the whole thing to come out right. That makes the, the smoothing of anything up much, much easier. I really enjoy it. You know, I enjoy the physical aspects of doing work. It doesn't bother me. It hardly wears me out really at all. It's just fun. Like I say, the inboard side of the guard is too high. So, you know, if I get carried away planing the in whale, it's going to have an angle downhill. 
So I have to kind of get close to the line on the in whale and then plane the guard and then switch back and forth so I can get it closer on both sides and not spoil the angle on the in whale. You can clearly see it plane in one side of the in whale, the inboard side, you know, and the pencil line, no matter how many strokes I make, until I get down to it, it just stays there. So I pretty much know what I'm doing there. Now I'm going to switch to the guard and I'm playing in only the inboard edge of the guard. You can clearly see, you know, the plane just ejecting all kinds of material, but the plane has not touched the pencil line. And it isn't going to until I make quite a few more strokes. And I can't spoil the inboard side of the guard because the in whale's higher. So, you know, it's opposite when you're playing in the in whale. If you leave the guard too high, you're gonna end up playing in the in whale on the wrong angle. So you got to be careful and you have to have it in your mind that you're doing that when you get started. Now, every time I take a stroke, I have to be kind of careful because if I tilted the plane a little bit, it would just do something I didn't want it to do. And uh, you probably noticed that I have the plane quite a bit across. Well, it cuts better, but in this direction, the boat's kind of hollow. So you have to have the blade out a million miles. Then if you want to plane across a little bit, the plane blades out too far. So what you do is you set it just right for yourself and you plane kind of diagonally like this. Now every now and then I have to check and see how it bears on there. Well, that's pretty nice right there. Maybe the in whale's got to go a little bit on the inside like that. So, you know, just make another stroke. That's pretty much it. Some places playing a lot harder than other places. I can't reverse directions. My, my strength won't let me do it. So, you know, I have to do it this way. And as I go along, I check it. And you can actually look at it and see if it's got a space under there, or you can rock it a little bit. You see, I got to take that one down a little bit more, and this one's just about right. So another stroke or two on the ends whale, and it should be right. Check it again. Oh, that's looking pretty good. One more stroke or two on the, out, on the guard. That area should be just about right. We had to do an awful lot of planing years ago before electric planes got real good. You know, we had them, but they didn't work very well. And, uh, you know, so we plane a lot of stuff, a lot of planking edges, you know, the progressive bevel. Man, just all kinds of things, you know, you have to plane the end grain of like floor timbers to fit them down into the hull and all this stuff. So, you know, you planed and you planed and you planed, man. Well, you see me working the plane diagonally on there like that. And, uh, you know, it makes the width of the blade as it's cutting a little bit narrower, but you can concentrate either side or the other side you know, very easily like this. And uh, the other thing is, the boat's got a curve in it this way. If I set the plane on it this way and try to plane, it won't do it. It won't do anything, you know, because the blade's not touching the surface. I'm going to show you the curve in the boat that you're fighting against with the plane. You can see the light shining right through it there. You know, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. So, like I say, you can't use the plane in this direction. You have to use it in this direction if you expect the plane blade to get down to your work. You can plane something like this and you have to count on using your plane diagonally like this. Now, you can hear it bumping on the backstroke and uh, what it's doing is finding all the lumps for me. I can hear the plane banging onto the lumps. In order to get it really smooth, you kind of work your way backwards like this and then the aluminum plane leaves the aluminum oxide up on top of all the bumps. So I can even look back at where I've even planed, you know, where I've already been, and I can see if it's got a little lump or something. And guaranteed, I go back there and plane that, and you can feel it under the plane as a little lump. Like I say, especially if you're going backwards. You know, I actually plane my way forward, and then I plane my way backwards, you know. And uh, the other thing is, when the plane gets these skidders, I call them, in here, 
the reason for that is that planes are just made to cut on the push. You know, and most all planes are designed to cut straight like that. I don't use them that way. And uh, what happens is you get in a frenzy of planing, really, is what happens. And uh, you draw back. And that's how you get the skidders. So if I could only plane that way, that'd be wonderful. But I can't make myself pick the plane up and then plane again. So, you know, you're stuck with this a little bit. But it's no big deal. You know, a few strokes, 10 strokes maybe, you get a skidder. You pull it out, keep going. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm going to do a little checking for humps and bumps, but basically I've gone from one end to the other, so it's looking pretty good. We're ready to get the caps out and put those on. And we have some very nice pieces of material for that. Nice, nice white oak and curved like this, so the gunnels are really going to look nice.